It certainly is, and it's the last thing that Iowa wanted. They really pride their caucus system as being you know, quite stellar, really being a standard bearer for the U.S., kicking off the election season, kicking off the, the primaries, and this is just a disaster. Um, the results probably won't be out until the morning. The party's struggling with being able to explain why this is happening, and you can expect Trump to just dig in on this. Does it mean anything for the candidates themselves? I mean, we can think of four or five off the top of our head who seem to be the main candidates. I think the field is still pretty much double that as well. Yep. Are we going to see a lot dropping out after this? Well, so right. So I was always a, a big kind of game changer. You'll see New Hampshire just one week. So a lot of the candidates, even if they don't do so great in Iowa, they'll try and stick on to New Hampshire, see if they can get a bump there with a very different kind of voter and different kind of demographic. Mm -hmm. But for sure, it's a big field now. Some are going to have to and, drop and finally out. Finally for me, I mean, I mentioned Buttigieg as well. Uh, do you see already amid the chaos, can you see anyone you think could be a clear winner? Oh, well, so one thing that we have heard so far is that the um, the numbers are much, whoever is going to win will be a much lower margin of, of victory than in the past. And we expect a lot of close, um, a, a lot of close results coming out of this. Obviously, Biden, Sanders, both polling very strong, as well as Buttigieg and Klobuchar. It's funny, I mean, when I heard this this morning, it just suddenly took me all the way back to 2000 and hanging chads and the problems with the electoral process at that point. It certainly does, right? It's almost people. like traumatic memories coming back from that election and just the, the disaster of the election uh, process it just itself. Raises, it raises some questions about the process, obviously, but, but coming back to, to Steve's line of questioning, where then do you think, based on what we know so far, does this leave Sanders and Warren? Because the suggestion is that actually they haven't done as well as some had hoped in their own camps through this Iowa process. Yeah, so it will be interesting to see. Sanders has had a pretty strong late surge. Um, he's been really effective in doing a lot of um, Twitter outreach and reaching out to Latino voters, voters who weren't always courted so much in Iowa. So he was actually polling fairly strong at the end, um, somewhat in comparison to Warren, who had fallen off quite a bit. Um, Sanders had gotten a big bump from um, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez's endorsement. So he was polling more strong in Iowa than many thought he might be. I want to just pick up on that, the, the movement of that is Bernie Sanders, because there is sort of a campaign that's unfolding to elect a movement, not just Bernie Sanders, not the man himself. And I wonder whether it catches on, because in contrast, on the other side is President Trump talking about an economy, even in Davos, that works for everyone. But what we've seen is even greater inequality. Bernie Sanders wanting to tackle that inequality that exists in the United States. Do you think that movement will carry him across the line for the Democrats? Well, that's what a lot of, obviously, Sanders' base and the progressive camp more broadly, Warren supporters as well, will be looking for. And you really see this, you know, really uh, tension somewhat in the party right now between the more moderates, between the more progressives, and a really lot of momentum for Sanders and Warren going into this campaign with people who want to really push back at exactly what you said, this impression that the economy is working for everyone, when in fact, many Americans feel it's not working for them and that it's really just a certain percentage who are benefiting. The Americans listening to this would say, well, you can't see someone that left-leaning be elected to the White House and simply is not going to happen based on the numbers. What would you say to that argument? Is it possible in 2020? Yeah, and this is one of this is the huge question right now. And when we look at some of the national polls, Sanders does well against Trump. But that's if we're thinking more of a popular vote model. If you're actually looking at states and the way the electoral system works and what states will need to would get a progressive candidate across the line, it gets a lot tougher for a progressive candidate. With that said, um, you, the, many people in the party are worrying that if it is a more moderate candidate, big swaths of the party that do support a Warren or, um, or Sanders kind of candidate won't come out to vote or would support a third party candidate, so you lose votes in that sector. So it's a real, it's a real kind of uh, gamble right now with which voters you're going to court and which are going to leave. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.